This is JC Setting the Record Straight Podcast. I'm your host, JC. On this channel, we set the record straight. That means we fact check and correct commonly believed misinformation and propaganda. I didn't put out any content last week because I've been very busy. I've been dealing with this uh, case on a speeding citation, which I received in 2019. They've been dragging their heels with it, and they finally decided to bring it to trial. And they used the pandemic as an excuse, but I am entitled to a speedy trial. Irrespective of a so-called pandemic, the law says that unless you provide me with a speedy trial, you have to dismiss it. Now, the exception is for serious crimes. If there is a crime of homicide, rape, any type of felony, then the pandemic would be an excuse. But for low-level offense, a misdemeanor such as speeding, which is a Class C misdemeanor, it should have been dismissed. Now, this is about to be a boring lecture. For those of you who are low-level thinkers, then you may want to exit stage left. So when most of you get a traffic citation, you just pay it. You, you assume that you're guilty and it's like, okay, I don't want to deal with it. And you know what? Rightfully so. Because even with my legal knowledge, it's, it can be a nightmare. But the bottom line is that the state has the burden of proof. You're not guilty until they prove you guilty. And the, re the, the way that lawyers are able to get most traffic citations dismissed is on technicalities. Now, I don't know the laws of all states, but generally a traffic citation is not a proper charging instrument. So, without a proper charging instrument, the court does not obtain jurisdiction. So, in my state, they have to file a sworn complaint, which is usually given by the police officer. But, in addition to a sworn complaint, there are specific elements that have to be included in the sworn complaint. I mean, just to give a few examples, it has to state that it's in the name and authority of the state. It has to give the terrial, territorial location and say that it's within the jurisdiction of that territory. It has to state that it's against the peace and dignity of the state. I mean, there's a long laundry list, but one of the important ones, it has to have a mens rea. Mens rea is a Latin term, which basically means a culpable mental state. That means that they have to allege that you acted either intentionally, recklessly, purposefully, etc. They can't just say you did it. They have to state your culpable mental state. And then they have to actually prove it. And then if they say that you operated a vehicle, right? They say you operated a vehicle above the posted speed limit. They have to say how you operated. They didn't see you put your feet on a gas pedal. Then they don't know that you actually operated the vehicle. These are all things that are supposed to bring about reasonable doubt. And then additionally, just because you have a posted speed limit, that is not the actual speed limit. The posted speed limit is prima facie evidence of what is reasonably prudent. But you can actually rebut that prima facie evidence by showing the conditions of the road, that it was clear, there was no traffic on the road. They want to think that just because you went over the speed limit that you violated the law, but that is not the case. So now that we've gotten the legal stuff out the way, um, I filed a motion to dismiss way back in, I believe, 2020. And I did cite the law, but in, in addition to that, I did a lot of shit talking. Um, I mean, I've gotten tickets dismissed plenty of times in the past, and it always works. But this time, it didn't work because I did a lot of shit talking. I talked about how they were parasites, how they were siphoning money from the public, how they needed to get real jobs instead of harassing people. I guess I didn't think anything of it because the law was clearly on my side. It's like, regardless of how much shit I talk, surely they're going to dismiss this citation. Well, I guess the judge didn't like all of my shit talking, so he refused to dismiss it. Even though I had all the case president backing me up, they had no, the prosecutor had nothing to respond. You know, nothing in response to negate anything that I said. 
And this prosecutor was average at best, right? He's not good. The only reason he's able to stand on his own two feet is because the judge has been propping him up. This is supposed to be an adversarial process, but the judge has been helping him the whole time. It's been two against one. So I filed various motions. I didn't get any discovery. There's, I know this is about to be boring, but they're supposed to give you exculpatory evidence. Exculpatory evidence is anything that would negate your guilt. Um, it's called. It's also called Brady evidence. If they don't give you um, Brady evidence, then that is grounds for a dismissal or a reversal on appeal. So they gave me no um, exculpatory evidence. And the specific exculpatory evidence that I requested was the manual on the speed radar. Because those speed radars are not um, infallible. Like they are subject to error. They have to be calibrated regularly. The person who's using that speed radar has to be trained properly. Anyway, when that uh, police officer was on the stand, he tried to lie and say that they're, they have no error. And because they didn't give me the manual, I couldn't impeach his testimony. So that's something I'm going to be raising on appeal. But anyway, um, they dragged this case on and on and on for months. For actually years, because this started in 2019. I filed a motion to recuse the judge, and of course they denied it because they're biased as hell. They said the reason I filed a motion to recuse is because I didn't like the judge's ruling, ruling, and that was an improper basis. But no, my motion was based on his temperament and his um, inability to be impartial because he was helping the prosecution throughout the entire case. So long story short, we finally got a jury trial. And, you know, there's a process called voir dire where you have your jury selection. And I was trying to select the smartest jurors possible. I wanted jurors who were libertarian, those who believed in limited government. But we're working with slim pickings. In general, smart people don't get selected for jurors or juries. The people who get selected for juries are bottom of the barrel. They're not my peers because they're not smart enough to be my peer. They didn't know shit about the legal system. And most of them are hardcore statists. They worship the state. They think that whatever the state says goes. They worship the judge. They're impressed by the prosecutor. So I was trying to stress to them that it doesn't matter if you go over the post of speed limit. The law says that your speed has to be reasonably prudent regardless of what your actual speed was based on the conditions at that time. So if it's clear, it's not raining, it's not snowing, you can go above the posted speed limit. And of course, the judge lied because the prosecutor during his opening statements was talking about how this charge could only result in a possibility of a fine. There was no possibility of jail time, which is absolutely incorrect because if you don't, if you don't pay the fine, then you are subject to jail time. This is something that the status don't seem to understand, right? Because they always talk about how they support government regulations, but government regulations are act of violence. Government regulations can only be enforced in three ways. Either they can throw you in a cage physically, they can steal your money, or they can kill you. All three of these scenarios are acts of violence. So you cannot be a liberal who supports big government. Well, I'm not even going to say liberals because conservatives also support big government, but in a different way. But anyway, they never gave me any of the discovery. And part of the evidence that they had was this video footage which showed me going over the speed limit. And then, I mean, I didn't remember everything that I said, but I, I was talking about how I was running late for work. But... The reason I said I was running late for work because I thought the police officer would have some sympathy. Um, of course he didn't and then he turned around and used that against me. Usually people, um, usually police officers will cut me a break because I'm a veteran and it says that on my driver's license. But this dude was a complete asshole. So anyway, the jurors were not smart. I did 
have a black man on there who was sympathetic. I could tell just based on the questions I asked him during Vore Dyer. He didn't really believe in speed limits. He said that they were too low. But the judge also lied and told the jury that their decision has to be unanimous. So he's thinking, oh, I have to go along with these white people. But really, you can actually have a hung jury. But see, this is the thing. There's a lot of things that you're not allowed to say in front of the jury, right? If you try to tell them what the law is outside of what the judge's instructions are, then they're going to object and they're going to silence you and they're going to try to make you look like you're stupid and you're crazy. So all you can do is raise all these issues on appeal, which is tedious as hell. Um, you have to pay an appeal bond, which the appeal bond is double the amount of the citation itself, plus all these additional fees. Now, the statute says that the appeal bond has to be made payable to the state. However, the judge rejected my initial appeal bond because it was made payable to the state. He wanted my appeal bond to be payable to the county. Now, this is unlawful, but he was effectively blocking my appeal. He wasn't going to forward my appeal to the appellate court until I paid it to the county. Technically, the appeal is defective if it's made payable to the wrong government entity. But I can't even get appellate review of my appeal until I file the appeal. So I have to pay in order to get them to review it. Now there is a another way that I can get a review, which is a petition for writ of mandamus. That is a separate lawsuit, which you're basically asking an appellate court to review a ministerial act. And if they rule in your favor, then they would order the lower court judge to perform that ministerial act however you have to pay a filing fee and the filing fee was significantly more than the citation itself or the judgment itself and courts don't like to issue writs of mandamus because it makes judges look bad so they'll give all these excuses and blah 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 and they will essentially give you the relief that you're requesting without actually granting your petition for writ of mandamus. So it counts as an actual loss. So if you have all these loses as a pro se litigant, they can add up all of those losses and have you declare a vexatious litigant, which if you're declared a vexatious litigant, that means that you can't file lawsuits without getting permission from the court. So anyway, this judge was about to get um, a promotion. He was going to be promoted from an associate judge to chief judge of the uh, municipal court. So they had city hall and this was one of the items on their agenda. And so I couldn't go in person because I had to work. And so I decided to participate through Zoom. Again, I was still at work and I could have gone in the back but I couldn't get a good connection in the back. I had to go to the front, which, you know, you can still see me through the glass doors. But I thought, you know, I'm only going to be speaking for three minutes. You know, how bad could it be? Sure enough, a low level deficient thinker, thinking black woman came pounding on the door, screaming while I'm in the middle of speaking to city council and the fucking mayor. And she was screaming as if... She, this was some kind of life or death situation and I'm so annoyed. I'm, I'm just like trying to ignore her, but she just kept screaming louder and louder. And I just give her a hand signal to go away and shut up. But this is what black women always do. So your office is closed and they will still come banging on the door because they want to use the restroom or whatever bullshit they have going on. They know it's closed, but they still want you to help them anyway. So anyway, I have essentially already written my appellate brief. The only thing is I don't have the exhibits yet because I don't have the clerk's record. So it's already done. I got to put the exhibits together, but um, it's all ready to go. But the bottom line is that there are important things going on in the world. In the world, some of us are actually trying to fight against the system. We're not all just sitting here on YouTube running our mouths. 
But there are people who think that they're that the world revolves around them and their petty bullshit. Because I am extremely annoyed that that judge has been confirmed to be the chief justice for the municipal court. And I was the only speaker who opposed that. And then I was interrupted by this annoying black woman. So a lot of people have their heads in the sand. They have no idea what's going on. They think that the world is a lovely place because they have no awareness of the corruption that is going on. But I'm fully aware of it and it's very depressing. I'm not just going to give my hard earned money to the government when they don't have jurisdiction and they didn't follow the proper procedure. This citation or this complaint should have been dismissed a long time ago, but I'm still dealing with this, you know, from 2019. So a lot of people can't understand why I wouldn't be happy about life, why I don't have such an optimistic viewpoint the way that they do. It's because I am I am aware of how the system operates. I see it as oppression and I was bred into this bullshit. So we are all slaves for the system and we are all subjugated. It just is what it is. So I'm still going to be de dealing with this appeal. Um, I don't think that it's going to take me long because I've already done most of the work, but I still have to go to hearings and I'm still going to have to do shit. Um, I don't know. I'm still going to try to put out some content, but you know, if I get tied up dealing with this shit, then it, you know, I'm just not going to be able to put out content. I doubt that very many people listen to this because I'm sure it's not interesting, but that's the reason why you're happy and that's the reason why I'm not. Your head is in the sand, my eyes are wide open, and I see things for what they really are. So while you're sitting around, you know, what doing whatever frivolous bullshit you're doing while you're worshiping money, while you're trying to be entertained on YouTube, I'm actually trying to fight the system. So yes, things are probably a lot easier for you. It's easy to be a slave and to be controlled by the system than it is to fight against it. Thanks for your support. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you will know when I upload new content.